It has been way over a month since I created my last video. It's a long time. I have created few shorts in the meantime to point my new audience into some of my older videos, but this is not the same. Why such a long break? It is the Soccer World Cup that is to blame. It completely disrupted my video uploading routine. In hindsight, taking into consideration the performance of the Polish national team, I would be better off uh, creating new YouTube videos instead. Then it was Christmas that made the break even longer. Anyhow, 2023 is here and I would like to use this opportunity to wish to all my viewers Happy New Year. Let's hope it's going to be better than the previous one. My New Year resolution is to be more consistent with my upload schedule. Right now I find firsthand how difficult it is to resume creating videos after you allowed yourself to get lazy for a while. Anyway, I hope you will be still around watching my videos and help me grow my channel this way. Today's video is going to show how to use these large flexible WS2812 uh, LED matrices. This is quite similar to the way we were using those 8x8 LED matrices, but don't you worry, I will include some features that I have not yet discussed and that should make an interesting watch, so stick around. The matrix is 32 by 8, so 256 LEDs altogether. As you can see it is flexible and just like in case of 8 by 8 matrix, we can connect several of these matrices together. If we turn it around, you would see the connection cables. First you have connections that will go to the microcontroller, so 5 volts and ground and also data in connection. If you would like to connect subsequent matrices, you would use these connection cables, so again 5 volts and ground and then data out connection. But what are those cables in the middle? The matrix when fully lit draws a lot of current and the powering it from Arduino will not be enough. So these cables can be used to connect the matrix to the external power supply. If your project would require to lit at times all LEDs white at full brightness, you would require the excess of 10 amps. In this case, you might need to use those dedicated LED switching power supplies that provide up to 12 amps. For the purpose of this video and the future projects I have in mind, powering the matrix from Arduino should be enough. If I need slightly more current, I can use standard power adapter that provides 2 amps and use this DC female plug-in to 2-pin screw terminal adapter to connect it to the matrix. But did you notice? The way those power supply cables are labeled does not make sense. It should be 5 volts and ground and you clearly see 5 volts and data in. Let's use multimeter to double check the connections. The middle 5 volt connection is correctly connected to the other connections labeled 5 volts. The middle data in connection is thanks god not connected to data in connection on the right, it is in fact connected to ground cable, which is correct. I sometimes do silly labeling mistake on my custom PCB projects, but this? This is mass production, so you would expect they would notice this mistake by now and correct it. My confidence level when checking this matrix module, which I got from AliExpress, was understandably not very high. Before we can start working on the LED project, we need to figure out how LEDs are connected within the matrix. Is it along the columns or is it along the rows? To figure this out, let's connect the matrix. This is one of the easiest projects when it comes to connectivity. We connect 5 volts and ground of the matrix to Arduino 5 volts and ground and then data in pin goes to any digital pin of Arduino. It will be the digital pin 12 in our case. If you watched my other videos related to WS2812 individually addressed LED strips and matrices, you'd know that I used FastLED library to control them from Arduino. Here is the brief recap on how to do this. If you're looking for more information, I would encourage you to watch this video 
that gives more information on how to install FastLED library and write the code, and this one, which will show you how to work with different color schemes. So let's look at a few simple code examples. The declaration and setup parts of the code would always be the same. We need to declare the FastLED library first, then we need to tell the code that we have 256 LEDs in the matrix and that they are connected to digital pin 12. Next we need the array of 256 CRGB objects where CRGB object represents a color in the RGB color scheme. In setup we declare the LED strip or matrix providing LED type which is WS2812, data pin number and number of LEDs. We can also set the brightness which value ranges from 0 to 255. Let's look at the first example. In the loop we run command that updates the first CRGB object in the table. We set it to white using predefined color value. To show the result on the matrix we need to execute fastLED show command. Voila! The first LED is lit. Now let's update the code to lit the last LED in the matrix. Done. Now to something slightly more complicated. We will for loop through all 256 LEDs, litting them one at a time. In the for loop we lit the LED corresponding to current value of variable i, but we also turn off the LED which has an index i-1. Again, after each iteration we need to run fastLED show command to reflect the changes, as well as wait few milliseconds before the next change. Let's see how this works. Great. That answers our question on how LEDs are connected within the matrix. They are connected along the columns. Off to the last example, which will be very similar, but we will use different colors. So we have similar for loop. We lit the LED corresponding to value of a variable i, blue, but then we also lit the next LED green and the follow-up LED red. The if statements prevent us from going beyond the limits set by the table size. We also turn off the LED, which has the index i-1. Let's run it. It is always tricky to record LED projects. You would have to take my word for it that the colors are nice, bright and properly saturated. If you watch my other videos, you know that I like to use diffusion panels for my LED projects. Since I am already planning to use this matrix in one of my upcoming projects, this video is not going to be different. Here is a Tinkercad project I created for this. This is of course just a half of the diffusion panel, as the whole thing would not fit onto my 3D printer's bed. And here is the final result. One half is printed. And here are both pieces. I also printed few additional parts that will help me to connect both pieces together, as well as serve as a stand and the future mounting point for the case that would hold Arduino and other electronic parts essential for the project. For now, let's just insert the matrix in and run our sample programs again to see how this would look like with the diffusion panel. Looks great. I might need few corrections, but I will implement them working on the actual project I planned to use this matrix for. Actually, there is a slight problem with the code we've been going through. Nothing major. The error did not really affect the first three examples, but it definitely affected the last one. Can you spot what it is and how it can be fixed? If you can, drop your comments below. If you struggle, I suggest you check the color scheme video again. What do you know? We have run out of time. This video is already 10 minutes long and if I fit into it all the topics I wanted to talk about, it will most likely exceed 20 minutes and you will lose interest halfway through. So I think it's better idea to take a break now and make it part one and release part two of this tutorial next week. Spoiler alert! In this video I'm going to show you how to display 8x8 color pixel arts automatically generating code from a pixel art design app. Also I'm going to show you how tricky it is 
to generate text without using any additional tools and then show you how much simpler it gets when you use libraries that are available out there. If you are still watching this video, that means that you like this content, so this is the perfect time for you to smash that like button. Subscribe if you have not done already and press that bell button to get notified so you don't miss the second part of this tutorial. See you next week.